in this video, we're going to cover random stuff. Stuff that I didn't have enough of to put in their own topic, so here it is. Things such as enabling the ability to click on meshes with the mouse. The difference between blueprint interface functions and events. And how to avoid casting by using blueprint interfaces. Let's go and look at the first one. Enabling click on objects. So the issue we're going to run into is if I had my mouse working, well, let's fix the mouse at least right now. Just go ahead and basically ignore what I'm doing here. What I've done is turned on the ability to have the mouse work in my player controller. And as you can see, it's working. But if we click on this object, nothing's happening. If I pull up this object, well, on clicked has an event called print string. We go to our stack mesh. Well, we have the on click. We have even stuff like cursor over and release and stuff like that, but nothing's happening. Now you could be like me and spend two hours and be super confused on why it's not working, or that's what this video is for. Inside of your player controller, by default, it is not set to enable click events. It's set to enable touch events, just not click events. And I don't really know why, but it's annoying. So if you enable click events, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on show mouse cursor as well so we can actually see it again. When you enable click events, this downhill here will unlock. And these are which buttons count as click events. By default, it's left mouse button, but you could add in any other buttons you want. And then you have things such as which cursor is being shown for the mouse, which click trace channel is used. You know, maybe you have something specific where you only want to be able to click on certain collision channels and then the distance. So now when we run this and we move our mouse and click, now it says hello. So don't spend an hour trying to figure out why it doesn't work. Create a new player controller and assign it to your game mode or just modify the default player controller in your template or, or your project if you have one. And you'll need to just simply enable in the player controller the click events option. Blueprint interfaces. Blueprint interfaces are a great way to generically communicate between different things. Now, if you were to open up a blueprint interface, so in this case, I'm gonna open this one up here. By default, it's gonna come with a function and we'll go ahead and do add new function. And it's gonna look like this. Now, let me rename this to my function. And we'll go ahead and save this out. We're going to go into our actor and make sure our actor implements that. And it does implement my blueprint interface. And then we'll type in my function. So we'll right click, we'll type in my function. And you'll actually find it says add event my function or call event my function. And if you look over here under functions, it's not here. Well, this is just the way Epic decided to do it. Technically, this is an event, not a function. If we were to add a new function, and we'll call this one my real function, in order to actually make this a function, we need an output. If we have an output, we have a return node. It doesn't matter what the output is, but once you add that output, we'll call this nothing, for example, it's going to now become a function. So now anything that implements that will have it in their interfaces list over here for functions. And you'll see it actually shows up as a function. So that's going to be your difference. If it's just no output, then it's going to show up inside of your event graph. When you right click and you add a custom event, in this case, it was called my function. It'll be add event and the name of it. If you have added an output to it, like we did under my real function, it's going to now be an interface event over here, interface function and it'll show up as an actual function. Now, the nice thing about this is the return node doesn't have to do anything. You could technically just use the return node as a way to easily know which events, functions, interface, do hickey you want to actually use inside of something that implements this. So in this case, let's say this is an event and I don't intend on having an output function. I could still put something here called out and make it a boolean and that's going to now turn it into instead of a custom event it's going to make it over here into a function i don't have to use this but the nice thing is if we go into class settings let me go ahead and close these go into class settings we'll remove the interface we'll go ahead and hit no 
when we add in the interface that does this, we're going to immediately know exactly what we can do, what things we might want to override or what things we might want to use. It gives it into us a nice list of all of our interface functions as long as we have an output. Now, using Blueprint interfaces, these are a great way to actually skip casting to certain things. So keep that in mind if you're ever trying to do something where you might have to cast multiple times or you might have to continually get access to something. Let me show you what I mean by that. We have our game mode here. Our game, mo game mode has a few things that we do inside of it. Maybe there is a function called increase score. And look, there is a function called increase score. Well, technically it's event, but you know, we have something called increase score. Now let's say my little blueprint that I'm playing with over here wants to increase the score. Well, I'm going to need to get the game mode. Then I need to make sure I cast to the game mode. So in this case, I'm hoping it's a third person game mode. And then I either need to hook this up to an execute wire or convert it to pure and hope it doesn't fail. And then I can do update. Oh, no, it was increase score. And there we go. Now, if we use blueprint interfaces, we can actually skip this. And then just in case we do something wrong, we can have a silent failure instead of a hard failure. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go to our game mode. And we're just going to simply make a new blueprint interface called blueprint interface game mode. And we'll have a new interface event called um, increase the score. And I'm doing it increase the score because I don't want to go ahead and have to update and delete this. Now increase the score has nothing for inputs or outputs. So we're good there. And so we're good here. We'll go into our third person game mode, make sure our game mode implements our interface. I can go ahead and now, for example, do, well, first of all, after you add the interface, compile and save. Now I can do increase the score event right here. And if anybody calls increase the score, it's going to go ahead and run this event. Now the nice thing in my actor now is I don't have to cast to increase the score anymore. I can go right off the game mode, type increase the score because it's going to send a message and I'm done. So this allows us to just remove one simple event, one, one node, basically one cast, one conversion, one, whatever you want, one thing from our chain, we can clean up our blueprints a little bit better. And it allows us to not have to remember which game mode we used. What did we name it? What is our actor called and all those things like that. The only real use here is it's again, it's a way to skip casting. It's a way to cheat the system, not have to worry about casting and easily just simply do something you want. The other nice thing is if you do, for example, get game mode, and then we have the, um, we did increase the score. You'll notice they're under the class interfaces. So if we were to go, for example, down here and go to class and then the interface. So we know this is the game mode. So it's the interface for the game mode. We can easily get a list of any single functions we've implemented that we want other people to access. So we'll know all of our functions that we want other people to access. So that's it. Those are just some random things that hopefully you'll get some use out of and will help make your game jam easier and quicker and your iteration over your project more fun and actually work in the case of the mouse click.